It's called the Broughton, a small cluster of islands on the Pacific coast, a place that few Canadians outside of British Columbia have ever heard of, the kind of place that's not only out of sight, but a little out of step with the rest of the world. Well, as we reported several weeks ago, the Broughton has become a battleground in a high-stakes war involving money, science and salmon. And now, with a big international public relations firm on the scene, the stakes have gotten even higher. How come there's no other boats out here? <laughs> it's rough, remote, and we're on surveillance. I don't think they're coming to see us. The target is a salmon farm. Where'd they go, Joe? No nets, no fish. Why do they got people out here? They're gearing up to bring fish out here. Robert Mountain, a native patrolman, is watching because no one else is. What's the plans for this site? I'm not exactly sure. You know, you guys can go talk Two sides are circling for a fight, an industry that wants to farm fish. Just, uh... We're outside your boundaries, so we're all right. Yeah, and know, the I people who want to save wild there. salmon. There's no room for compromise. No fish farms, period. Get out, leave, leave us alone. You're not wanted here. We're here to protect the marine resources and everything that's involved in the water. We have to stop them somehow. The front line is the Broughton Archipelago. It's a little like marine land. Hello. And a lot like an industrial zone. There are 27 salmon farms here, some packing a million fish or more. Most of the farms are owned by Stolt from Norway. The others by George Weston Limited which also owns Loblaws, Provigo, and Zares. Christ, everybody seems to want farm fish. Locals like Billy Proctor fish salmon the old hard way. This is literally your front yard. Oh, you yeah. look out. Yeah. What are the fish farms doing to your front yard? 25 or 30 years ago, we had one of the richest coastlines in the world with wild salmon. There should never have been allowed to be fish farms put in where there is that many wild salmon going along. But On the surface, the industry looks benign, but invisible underneath, there can be epidemics of fish disease and open sewers of fish feces. No one knows for sure how the farms might impact the wild salmon that migrate through the bays and inlets past a gauntlet of them. That's why in Alaska, salmon farms are banned but not here. All right. Chris Bennett makes a living helping guys like me hook salmon. Okay, it's just a little cod. Yeah, see, he's got and that's a sea louse stuck in its head. One. Not pretty, but not fatal. That. You get a little fry with 10 or 15 of those lice on it, and it's a whole different thing. Well, what have you seen? I've seen fry like that with lice all over their sides, yeah, and, and bleeding around the edges. Where they've been, where they've eaten right through the mucus and the scales. It was two summers ago. Chris saw hundreds of baby pink salmon struggling to swim the inlet. They were being eaten alive by lice. Chris's emotions are all over his face, and he looked so worried. He brought me these two little fish, and he said, Do you think that this has to do with salmon farms? Alexandra Morton's a biologist who knew from European research that sea lice and salmon farms go together like dinner and dessert. She hit the water, dipping up baby pink salmon and examining them for lice. It was a very desperate period of time because everywhere I went, these little fish were wrecked. They're bleeding from their eyes and their fins. They were not going to survive. And there was thousands and thousands and thousands. You were convinced at the time that there was a link between the, the fish farms and the problems with these wild fish. Yes, for two reasons. One, when I went to a place where the fish uh, had come from the river and not past a fish farm, they were fine. And then when I got closer to the fish farm, you could see the lice numbers just exploded. Farm fish are perfect hosts for parasites. To sea lice, this is an all-you-can-eat buffet. They're uninvited, but they latch on, breed, and multiply. And the other thing was the literature. Every single coastline that has salmon farms and wild salmon have had big problems with their wild fish due to sea lice coming from the salmon farms. 
She alerted the people whose job it is to protect wild salmon, the Federal Department of Fisheries and Oceans. It sent a boat to investigate the sea lice reports, but found nothing unusual. A report was issued and the case was closed. Dr. Don Noakes was in charge. In general, there were low levels of sea lice on the pink salmon uh, that we surveyed. <laughs> but Billy didn't buy it. You could go anywhere and dip up a bucket full of fry with a little dip net. I mean, dipping blind, you'd get a bucket full, and DFO couldn't find any. So, What happened? What do you think? Well, when you see the babies dying all along the beach by the millions with uh, lice all over them, it don't, you don't... Uh, it's pretty well written there what's happening when they're dying like that. But how could the scientists get it so wrong then? <laughs> well, I don't know. Are they not giving us the... They're not giving us the truth, that's what I think. I think they know, but they don't want to... They don't want to rock the boat. I'm a scientist. I don't buy what they're saying. I think it's wrong. I think it's unscientific. I think it's untrue. Neil Fraser is a professor of theoretical geophysics with a keen interest in fisheries science. He believes the Department of Fisheries and Oceans is in too deep with the industry. I think the word came down from someplace, there will be salmon aquaculture, and you guys are going to make it happen quickly. The fish farm companies have found friendly waters in Nanaimo at Pacific Biological Station, DFO's West Coast Lab. Here, in a government agency that's supposed to protect wild fish, there's a division of aquaculture that's actively fostering the industry. Most of its research is geared to helping fish farmers grow a bigger, better product. And guess who's here? It's Dr. Noakes, the man who didn't find any sea lice on wild Pacific salmon. This is actually some work that we're doing with uh, Atlantic salmon and looking at Kadoa. What stage are these salmon? But these are, I think, on natural salt water. Um, and essentially, um, actually, it says these ones are coho. Why are these? They're actually... Uh, Turns out Dr. Noakes is actually the head of the aquaculture so division. Salmon. They all look the same. Do they? <laughs> so these Can you are tell Atlantis. the difference? These are Atlantis. That's what the tag says. Yeah. Here are these little wild fish coming down the inlets. And who's investigating? The sea lice on them? The head of aquaculture. Investigations should not be conducted by any party that might potentially be embarrassed by the results of the investigation. And this is why when a tobacco company scientist tells us that tobacco is not harmful, we take that with a grain of salt. So what was really being protected in the Broughton in the summer of 2001? Alexandra Morton was blaming salmon farms for a sea lice epidemic she predicted would decimate the pink salmon run. So how come DFO couldn't find any lousy fish? We've obtained internal government documents that reveal DFO knew its study of the problem was seriously flawed.